to Learning Soccer Cluster with Nick Kotenberg. In this video, we're going to go over how to use Soccer Cluster to upload images. And it's a little different than you may be used to, so um, here we go. Okay, I just want to show you a quick example first of what, what goes on here. So we're going to log in, okay, and then we're going to go to our profile here, and we're going to see that we have an image here. Okay, now you notice it took a long time to load, and that's because this is an 11 meg file, so I'll show you what we're doing here. First, I'm going to show you the small files real quick. So I just went on Google and typed in free images, and so I just got a couple quick images. The smallest one first. So we'll upload. You see that? Then we'll go upload. You see how fast that is? It's pretty, pretty fast, huh? Okay, cool. So how is this being done? So and then we'll, we'll do a big file to show of upload itself. And so upload, upload, give it a second, and it loads. Okay. So what's being done here is Saga Cluster, we are breaking the image into chunks and sending the chunks to the server and then storing them in the database and then calling that data and storing it in this image file here. If you do an inspect element on this image, You'll see we're using this data image JPEG, and we have all this garbage data at the end of it. And that's all the image data right there. And you see this dot 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 because it's hiding most of the image data, but it's really long. <laughs> okay, so you'll see it just go pull your mouse over. You'll see it just goes on and on. Well, anyway, you, you saw it. You, you can rewind the tape real quick and see it or the video. Okay, so first of all, what's going on here is we made a little model called services. Okay, and this is what does all the uh, create a file upload and push it to your user um, module, which has an upload function here. And that updates the image. So it loads the file from the file path, which will explain how to get that. And it sets the ID, you know, with the user ID, so it's tied to the specific user. And then we get the image and return it back as a data image, JPEG base64. We add a buffer there. Um, and we, to string it, it's, uh, base64. Okay, so we get the big garbage dump at the end of the um, this image JPEG base data. Okay, so that's kind of the server side, and we'll go over it more detail here in a minute. Now, on the client side, we kind of have to. This is a little bit wonky at first. So first of all, we need to create this little div here, right? And this is so, so we have you know uh, an up an, up, an input an upload and a place to store our, our picture here, okay? Okay, so we'll go to the Jade real quick, which is in our profile. Excuse me, templates. There we go. Um, and it's in this profile image little uh, um, um, tab content here. Okay, so what we did is we created a div here. We have you know your uh, little H2 that kind of explains what's going on here, and you could obviously make that. I, I just threw something quick. It's not. It's not. You know, because obviously you can do this a lot better. Uh, you know, in production or something. But um, there's a little image, and then you have an input here, and this is a type file, and we're only accepting images here. And we have a little break, and then an input group, um, and then uh, we have just a, this is just a place to put the name of the file like here so they can see what the name of the file is. You can actually um, not have this disabled and send the file name as well with the image and then that will give them the opportunity to change the name to something else that they want. I didn't really want to do that here. It's really simple. When we get to it, I'll show you how to just pass the variable. It's really simple. Okay, anyway. Uh, and then there's a button here. Um, and this is the button that actually starts the whole process. Okay, so if you remember here, this is the user's button upload button, right? Well, just like before, we're using or encapsulating everything inside jQuery, so you have to kind of sort of like think of it like instantiate everything, right? So when the user profile page gets loaded, uh, we grab the user data, we set it inside the div here with templatizer, like we've explained in previous videos. Uh, then we call bind upload, and we'll get to that and what that is. And then we'll show the profile page, and then we'll notify finish loading, which makes the loading image go away, right? And this stuff we've gone over in other videos, so if you want to see how this is working, you can go look at other videos and I'll explain it better. 
Okay, so when we notify a bind upload, what we're doing here is we're binding all these buttons on this page. Remember, it's a template, so you've got to bind them after they exist. So when the page first loads, they don't exist yet, because we're injecting them with templatizer. Okay, so first of all, we have this uh, users file box. And if you remember back to the Jabe there, that is this. This is that's the input. That's uh, this guy right here. This guy here that brings this thing up. Okay. Uh, luckily, HTML5 gives us a lot of does a lot of work for us. So we can kind of utilize that work. So we say when change. So that means that someone has clicked on the button and brought up the thing and selected an image. We're going to grab that file. So it's by the way, you can do multiple file uploads by just passing all the files <laughs> instead of just passing one. But anyway, well, we'll show you how to do one here and leave that to you to figure out how to do multiple. It's very simple. Anyway, so we grab the first one here. And then we say, okay, well, if the, it actually is a file and it's and it's valid, we will uh, remove the disable because currently there's a disable. Well, here. that file is kind of big. That's why it, this is 11 meg, so it takes so long to load. Uh, so actually, you know, we'll show something real quick. We'll do this right here and then we'll do refresh. It's fast, right? Because this is a 24k file. Okay, so you see this is disabled. So disabled and if there is a selected file like we go to selected file click like this you see this is no longer disabled right okay uh, and then we set the name box with the name of the file this guy here with the name of the file okay now we're in this state here so now what happens when someone presses this button well if we inspect the element we'll see it is users by upload button so when that is clicked we just just to make sure we verify that there's a file and a file name by the way, these uh, selected file and file name variables are set up here. And we're going to use a few of these here, so just keep in mind they're up here. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, I'm going to get the user ID, which is uh, the current user ID that the user is using, which we set that when we build the template. Um, and that is done here. Data user ID, user ID. It's passed in when you build the template. Um, up here, it's a user, we pass into the templatizer. Okay, so then um, the file reader, this is a JavaScript thing, so you can go look at file reader if you want. So, file reader, and we just to save the user ID, make it easily accessible, we assign that to the file reader, and then we set the file name in the file reader as well, and then we create this kind of little upload span stuff, and that's when you click the button up here, you'll see it's counts from 0 to 100 percent and this is kind of the, the boilerplate to do that so we have some IDs and stuff here that we will grab later and then we save the upload area HTML and we'll explain what that why or sorry excuse me we set the content here we said we save the old HTML here and then we set the the this oops, excuse me oh I keep doing that this content right here into here um, and then, and the reason for this is so we can just easily go back to the old content. It just, so I don't have to, I don't like, I don't see a point in this case to be using the templatizer just to build this little thing here. So I'll just write it out real quick here. Not a big deal. And then on file loader, we say on load, which we'll do a little bit later. Um, we're going to run this function. And then now we notify the server that, Hey, we have something to start. Okay. Uh, so, and if there's no file, we disable the, the button anyway. Uh, so notify server services upload start. Oh my kitty pierce is going crazy. I'm sorry. Okay. So um, what's going on here? Now this is the I'm not gonna go through the path to get to this because the path that's done in an early, earlier. Uh, how much time do we have left here? Oh, we're out of, well, we'll just keep going. I'll, I'll put multiple videos up. Okay. So anyway, um. So, what's my train of thought? Okay, so we set services here, and now I, this is all done in a previous video, so I'm not going to explain too much how that happens. But we sent here's our client, here's our data. We're sent to the to the upload. We uh, set a temporary, we set a very uh, a uh, a temporary folder fs. Um, oh, something important to note. Um, sometimes in some production systems, when you upload a file and do MySQL uh, file upload, uh, well, hold on, we're out of time. I'll do a second video here in a second. Uh, see you in the next video.